Okay, I'd like to do a problem that has something to do with the potential energy and minimizing the potential energy to find out if you have a um, stable or unstable equilibrium. Um, we can do all this with the force, of course. Um, in fact, it's equivalent to doing it with the force, like we talk about in class. However, um, I really would like to just try to do this um, in, th in this one context. Okay, so uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to have, let's say, um, three charged particles, okay? Um, and how I'd like them to work is have them all be identically charged, and I'd like to have one at each end be um, uh, fixed to the ends. So this guy and this guy are stuck where they are. Now I'd like to have some guy in the middle um, along some sort of uncharged wire that he's free to move along at. And he's charged just like these two are, but um, but he, he's free to move, okay? And so he'll find the energy minimum. So this distance here between these two charges is some number D. Right, and then from one end to the moving charge, movable charge, is some distance x. Uh, something simple like that. So um, let's go over here, um, identify what we have in the problem to work with. All right, uh, we've got what uh, three identical charged particles. Okay, and these um, particles have charge Q. All right, and they're um, mounted on a firm wire. Um, which has some length D. Right. And um, one is free to move. And it has some position uh, x, x, that's a good number, okay? And we would like to find um, the equilibrium position. So we'd like to find A, the equilibrium position, Xc, and let's see, what else would we like to find? We'd like to know, if, is it stable? Okay. Um, so we can just do that. Um, let's see what else. This is what kind of problem is this? We could do this with um, electric fields, but we will use the Coulomb energy. Okay, and um, that, as you recall is something like this. U, the potential energy of a configuration consisting of charges 0 and 1, is equal to Q0 and Q1 over our fun constant that we love, 4 pi epsilon naught, um, multiplied by the inverse of the distance between the two charges. Okay, So that's the um, configuration energy, the pairwise configuration energy between any two charges. Um, and you'll notice that we have three of those, between here and here, between here and here, and between here and here. Uh, we're not really going to have to worry about these two though, right? Um, because we can just use a gauge transformation and say that's part of our zero, that's part of our zero. So we don't really have to worry about those two. Um, so we've got all these guys, um, 
our ID, our rep, our con. So what we need is a strat, right? We need a strategy, right? Um, so we want to first find um, and sum uh, the u the u's, okay? Um, so u uh, zero one, for example, if we call this one, this zero, and this two, u zero one is um, q zero times q one, which is q squared over four pi epsilon naught, and the distance between these two guys is just one over x. U um, zero two is equal to q squared over 4 pi epsilon naught. Uh, the distance here, from here to here, is d minus x. Uh, it has to be d minus x, not x minus d, because this has to be a positive number. So um, this is 1 over d minus x. So if we sum them together, the um, total potential energy on u Zero, on zero, excuse me, is q squared over 4 pi epsilon naught. Um, 1 over x plus 1 over d minus x, uh, which is just going to be equal to um, q squared over 4 pi epsilon naught. Um, let's see d minus x plus x over x times d minus x. Um, thinking about it, even though uh, this has its appeal, I might just I might just go with um, taking the derivative of this one, uh, and that's what our next step is: is uh, to take the derivative. So we're going to want to take the derivative and we're going to want to set it equal to zero uh, to find the equilibrium, right? The derivative of where the derivative of the potential energy is zero, we have um, a maximum, a minimum, or possibly an inflection point. Um, so that's d u zero dx, uh, and this is where we could have used the force instead, right? Because this is this is just minus the force, right? Um, is equal to q squared over four pi epsilon naught uh, d dx one over x plus one over d minus x, which is equal to um, we're going to get a minus sign from either one of these, so q squared minus q squared over four pi epsilon naught. Um, this guy becomes 1 over x squared. Uh, this guy gets an extra minus sign here, so this is um, 1 over d minus x squared. Okay? And that thing's equal to 0, uh, which means this is equal to 0, this um, difference. Okay, so, so we set equal to 0. And then four, uh, we find xc by algebra. All right. So let's move up here and give myself a little bit more room. Um, so what I want is one over x squared is equal to one over d minus x squared. Um, this isn't going to come as a shock to many people when you do this. Um, it's pretty obvious that this is going to have to be where x is um, half d. Uh, but if you just, you know, go ahead and do the algebra, you get d minus x. So we cross multiply and all that other fun stuff. d minus x squared, which is equal to d squared minus 2dx plus x squared is equal to x squared, 
which means that um, x is equal to d over 2. Okay, so it's right in the center where we have an equilibrium. And, and that's what we'd expect in any case, right? So that's not too terrible, that's not horrible. Um, and then we have to take the second derivative And so we have d squared u naught over dx squared, which is equal to, um, oh, we take the derivative of this thing, right? So we get a minus two for either one of these guys. Um, so we end up with two uh, q squared over four pi epsilon naught. I usually leave constants like this four pi here because it sort of means something alone. Um, unless there's some um, traditional reason why I would, wouldn't. And then I come over here, we had the minus two, so we're left with uh, one over x cubed. And this one again gets that extra minus sign, so we have one over d minus x cubed. And to, to figure out if that's uh, stable, that's stable or not, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, substitute xc. All right, pretty simple. Um, xc is d over 2. This thing is quantity cubed. So we get this and this. They're actually both going to be this is d over 2 cubed, this is d over 2 cubed. We get twice that. So um, if we evaluate this at um, xc, we get uh, 2q squared over 4 pi epsilon naught um, times 2 times um, d cubed, 1 over d cubed over 8. Okay. Um, which is some number, uh, I guess that's fine. We don't really care about the number, to be honest. Uh, we can see from this, this is a positive number. These are all positive numbers. So we can see from this, this is greater than zero. And so it's stable. And that's what we expect again, right? And we expect it to be stable because if we come back and look at our picture way up here, um, this one is going, since these are all identical charges, this guy pushes this guy that way, this guy pushes him that way, right in the center the pushes are equal, and so any deviation, any slight deviation is actually going, going, to, going to reduce the, um, so if we push this this way, it reduces the um, contribution from this guy, increases the contribution from that guy, and so it goes back towards the center. Okay. Um, and that is a little bit of talk about what happens with your um, electric potential energy. I'll see you in class.